Hello there, my friends. I'm back, and I promised you that I would read you a fan fiction story. It took me a little bit longer than I uh, hoped to get to it, but I'm here now, and someone has submitted a fantastic piece of fan fiction that's just the right blend of awful spelling and, well, just awful. Um, to make it more fun, I've only had a little peek, I've only picked a few random paragraphs, and yes, this looks like it could be entertaining, but I've deliberately left the rest as a surprise for me, so it'll be as much a surprise to me as to you. We'll see what this sucker's like then. Today's story is called When Angels Deserve to Die by fanfiction.net user Music in My Mind. Good name. How wrong could it go? We'll see. It begins. I am alone. I am always alone. My sister and I never got along. They were always happy to run around Paris in their flouncy pink dresses while I stood back and watched them in the lacy v-necked black gowns I favoured in lieu of all that frilly crap. My mother died. She had the voice of an angel. She was beautiful with long, flowing, flowing, golden locks and eyes as deep a blue as the many, many, many watery oceans. Could that be a Julian Sands reference? I hope so. <sighs> My father hates me. I inherited his black hair and rebellious disposition, and he hates me for it. But one thing that came out of no hair was my eyes. Father always says, Mirabella, your eyes are so weird and red and orange and like my fire. Now go clean the fireplace. And then he beats me. I wish I liked drinking. I'd get drunk to chase it all away. I also sing a lot. I got that from my mother and what lifts me from this boo-wash countryside hell. I can also play the bass guitar and violin and piano. Good for you. Today I am trying out for one of the musicals at the Opera House. They are putting on The King and I. I wish I had the spirit to be Anna. Maybe my mother will be with me when I try out. I know I sing like an angel, but with my looks I think it's more like a devil. Is Fanch ready for me? I don't know. But here's hoping. I can't stay with my beautiful blonde sisters and my loathing father. I am running away. Yes, it sounds marvellous. A life amongst the ballerinas and stagehands and singers and theatre goers is what I want. The countryside was boring anyway. End of chapter one. Did you know that if you wear gloves, iPads don't work? Damn it. Chapter two. I arrived in Paris on my bet jet black stallion Rinslin. Rinslin was the only thing I wanted to remember from the countryside, but I would always have the scars to remind me of my father's beatings. But enough of that, I needed a new start. The wind whistled ominously as I tied Rinslin into the door of the opera house. I sheepishly poked my head in and saw all the ballerinas look in my direction and whisper. Life was always like this. I couldn't believe it. Maybe Paris wasn't much better than the countryside. Maybe I shouldn't have left my bourgeois home. But I could hear, hear a girl inside the auditorium butchering hello young lovers, and my eyes filled with tears. I would not let someone else less talented than me win the part of Anna. I held up my head and lifted my torn black skirts and marched past the nosy valley people and walked into the auditorium, slamming the doors against the wall. The girl on stage was beautiful in a cookie cutter way, and she stopped mid-song to stare at me like, how dare you? The managers came to me looking angry and faggy. What? Whatever. Don't interrupt, they yelled at me, but I simply ignored them and walked to the stage. I did not come this far to get shut down. When I think of Tom, I think of the night when the earth smelled of summer and the sky... Uh, they, they, she puts the whole lyrics of the whole song in it. I'm not reading that. Jeez, it goes on for pages. I opera sang it. <laughs> Is that a thing? 
I opera sang it in my beautiful coloratura. Don't know what that is. Tears brimming in my fiery eyes. Mademoiselle, that was beautiful. She spelled Mademoiselle. Hey, I think she spelled it right. That was beautiful. You will be playing Anna, the less gay manager said to me. <laughs> the author of this is a raging homophobe. I am Monsieur Fermin, and this is my partner, Monsieur Andre. Oh, she shipped Fermin and Andre. Thanks, I said, smiling triumphantly. After I was given a CD of the backup music, I started to walk out of the opera, pop, opera populaire, but I could feel someone's eyes on my back. Do I dare read another chapter? I think so. Ooh, Eric's POV. Yay! I wondered when we get to him. I had been training Christine for a long time and was eagerly watching her from the shadows as she tried out for the King and I, which is this great opera set in China. It's not an opera. But not as great as Don Juan Triumphant. I was determined that she played Anna. It was the only way I could show her how much I love her without showing her my face. She still thought I was her angel, if only she knew. Suddenly my angel was interrupted by the singing of someone else. My hand tightened on my noose, and I was about to leap from the shadows, but then I saw her. Her eyes were the colour of hell, of my soul. Her hair black like mine. Her waist was as thick as my wrist. Jeez, get some help. Her bosoms that were heaving while she sang with her beautiful sprinto soprano perfectly formed unlike Christine's small bus I think she means bust <laughs> she was more pretty than Christine I felt myself growing hard but suppressed a moan ew and her voice was heavenly where did she come from I must know. Okay, now I guess this is um, the other girl's POV, doesn't say. I left the opera house only, and untied Rincewind from the door, only to remember that I had bought no money with me from the countryside, and that I had nowhere to stay. Forgetful cow. I shivered and it began to rain, the sky growing black like my gown, and my hair, and my soul. I could not prostitute myself for money or shelter because I had my honour, even if I had no place to stay. However, I could not shake the feeling that I was being watched away, and I was growing damp. Ew. Perhaps I could beg the pol Perhaps I could beg the people at the opera to let me stay there. I was about to go knock on the door of the opera to wake up the managers, when a smelly arm grabbed me around the waist, and pinched a snipple through my black dress. What's a snipple? Hey, love, how about you come home with me? No, I cried, kicking and shouting and biting, while Rincewind whined and kicked and ran off. Cowardly horse. Too bad, love. He 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 he. And then I felt his manhood on my back. How short is she? Or how tall is he? I passed out, and everything went to black. Should we read one last more? Oh, there's only one more chapter. Let's 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 binge. Let's binge read this thing. <sighs> okay. <laughs> right, Eric's POV. There she was, lying in my bed, sound asleep. We had long since left behind Te Mortal World above. I had just killed the freak who had tried to rape her on the steps of the opera. Normally I would have turned my away out of the lack of care for the rest of society but there was something so fragile about this girl it's so fierce her eyes haunt me even now I laid her on the bed I had made for Christine and just sat because I could think of nowhere else to put her I don't know why I brought her to my home but she seemed to fit in so perfectly I watched her sleep for five hours my eyes never leaving her pinched but gorgeous face my eyelids had started to close when all of a sudden she started tossing and turning in her sleep. No, 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 she said in a maleficent tone. Her hands shaking as she rolled around on the mattress. And then she started to sing in her sleep. 
a song Tazat seemed to be crafted from years of suppressed pain. It was too heartbreaking. I had to leave to go walk and compose myself. I don't know what I was more scared of, her feverish singing or how much I wanted her. Okay, back to the girl's POV. Um, again, it doesn't tell us, but I'm just assuming because there's a little dot dot dot. I was surrounded by giants and spiders and giant spiders. <laughs> so, let me read that again. I was surrounded by giants and spiders and giant spiders and drips of blood and, and shadowy figures, glowing green eyes. I could hear, spelled H-E-R-E, Rinslin's hoofs somewhere in the distance. Where was I? What kind of world was this? Where was mother? Where was anyone? I need to be held. No, I sobbed. No. And then it came to me, a lullaby my mother used to sing to me as a child. And then it says, Viva Forever Lyrics, Artists and Spice Curls. Review the song, print the lyrics, Viva Forever Lyrics, MP3 downloads. Send Spice Girls polyphonic ringtone to your cell phone. Do you still remember how we used to be? And then it's like the whole, whole, whole song, basically. But, I mean, if you're going to copy and paste the song, don't leave the bit in the top that says Viva Forever lyrics, review the song, print the lyrics. That, that, that's just lazy. I'm sorry, but, but it is. Oh, goodness, this goes on for pages. Oh, we're nearly at the end, though. Good news. I woke up with a start and realised that I'd been in a nightmare. <laughs> I know the feeling, love. But looking at my strange and familiar surrounding, I wasn't sure I had quite woken up. I was in a beautiful black swan boat. Swan! Perfectly designed for lovemaking, which sat in the middle of a glittery cave. I got up and wandered around to discover I was surrounded by a beautiful lake. It was all so heartbreaking and tragic, which was apparent by the many drawings I saw of that same cookie-cutter girl. Where was I? Was this the home of the... Oh, God. The man who had attempted to steal my chastity, I suddenly remembered it. And yet it seemed like that man was too gruff to have the same appreciation of beauty that the owner of this had. And where was Rensselin? I wept pearly tears for myself and for the situation, and sat down at the beautiful electric keyboard and started to play. What was going to happen? Apparently we'll never know, because there's no more. What was this update to? Um, on July the 20th, 2006. I don't think any more updates are going to happen. And that's sad, isn't it? Or not. Okay, that was kind of fun. Um, what did you think of the new format? Did it bore you to hear? Did it amuse you? Would you like to see more like this? Um, I don't know. You tell me. Bye for now.